Welcome back. My name is Daco Bell. I am one of the hosts for OTG and this is OTG Gaming News. First on the list is we've got Back for Blood. It is an upcoming multiplayer survival horror game developed by Turtle Rock Studios and published by Warner Bros. Interactive Entertainment. Back for Blood is the next best thing to Left 4 Dead 3 and that's not a coincidence. Turtle Rock is a studio that was responsible for developing the Left 4 Dead franchise before it parted ways with Valve. Left 4 Dead's fans are sure going to flog to back for blood to finally get their filling of its long dormant parent franchise however this doesn't mean everything is looking rosy for Turtle Rock. It's actually under an unbelievable amount of pressure. Black for Blood needs to cut through a game market thick with zombie games while also being a successor to Love for Dead that's worthy of a decade of silence. Black for Blood's initial release date is June 18th of 2021, coming on all platforms including PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and Series S, and obviously on the PC. With Microsoft buying Bethesda Softworks and Obsidian Entertainment under their wing, I wasn't surprised to see a Fallout New Vegas 2 rumor. For those of you who doesn't know, Fallout New Vegas is published by Bethesda Softworks and developed by Obsidian Entertainment, so expect Fallout New Vegas 2 pretty soon. Hitman 3 gets a 7 part expansion based around the 7 deadly sins with the first DLC available for players in late March. Players will have the chance to expand their Hitman 3 experience in late March with a 7 part expansion that pits Agent 47 against the 7 deadly sins. Hitman 3 7 deadly sins is, as the title suggests, split into 7 pieces, each embodying one of the Christian sins and begins with Act 1, Greed, on March 30th. Hitman 3, released on January 20th, is the 8th main installment in the series and the 7 Deadly Sins DLC will be the first expansion of the game since its release. In the Christian belief system, the standard list of 7 Deadly Sins are Pride, Greed, Sloth, Wrath, Envy, Lust, and Gluttony and the installment in the DLC will each fall into one of these categories. Fans of Iron Fury's retro-inspired shooter gameplay can look forward to a new expansion called Aftershock hitting the game this summer. The expansion was briefly teased last year and looks to give fans even more of the nostalgic gameplay they love while turning up the volume even higher on an already loud adventure. Aftershock sees heroine Shelly Bombshell Harrison return in full force. The expansion also adds a range mode. This allows players to mix up the original campaign by additional elements such as new enemies, weapons, and more. That means anyone looking to replay Iron Fury can now do so under fresh conditions instead of merely replaying the existing narrative. If you're itching to dive back into the game, Iron Fury Aftershock will be available on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. Iron Fury Aftershock is coming out on the summer of 2021. The latest Rainbow Six Siege trailer showcases a new elite set for the attacker operator Zofia, who gets an outfit that many Resident Evil fans may recognize. The Stars Unit uniform gives Sophia the classic look of Jill Valentine from the original Resident Evil. In addition to the outfit, the bundle includes weapon skins for the LMGE, the M762, and the RG15, which seems to feature the Stars logo engraved on the weapon, a gadget skin for her KS70 lifeline, and an Elite Sophia chibi charm that can be equipped to weapons. Rainbow Six Siege players will also gain access to a unique Victory Dance, which shows her using a healing spray after looking injured and being surrounded by enemies. Interested players can pick up the bundle for 1800 R6 credits in the in-game store. Players will be familiar with the Arcane Studios for its unique games under the Bethesda umbrella. Since Microsoft recently acquired the publisher, it was unclear what would happen to Arcane's titles. Past releases are on Xbox Game Pass, and one of the studio's directors described the freedom provided by this move. Towards the end of the last generation consoles, Microsoft put forth a way to set its titles apart. Xbox Game Pass allows players to pay one subscription and access the entire catalog of games. The big name series like Halo, Gears, and Forza available through the service. Assassin's Creed Valhalla players will get to dive into the Wrath of the Druids DLC. Players will travel to Ireland to seek favor from Gaelic Kings. Sorry if I butchered that one. With new content like smuggling, ring forts, and a cult down to hunt down. However, it seems that the trophies slash achievements for these expansions already exist in the game's code. YouTuber X Jonathan was able to dig into the game's code and find said achievements, which include many spoiler-y details related to the DLC. 
He has proved reliable in the past and also recently licked an upcoming Basim outfit for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Don't Nod Entertainment is the company that is most often thought of when talking about Life is Strange, but is not involved this time around. Now that Life is Strange True Colors has been officially unveiled, there is one big question still surrounding the game. Why isn't Don't Nod Entertainment the one working on it? Publisher Square Enix is still involved in the latest installment of the Life is Strange series, but the game has got a new developer this time around. Deck Nine will be developing the game though this company isn't really new to the series, but Don't Nod is still the company most thought of when talking about Life is Strange. No official explanation, but it does seem Don't Nod is moving on to new projects. The signs that Life is Strange Strange True Colors might be getting a new developer started in earnest last year. The Paris based company announced it was splitting into two, with a separate studio starting up in Montreal. A few months after the separation, news came out that the Montreal team was working on a new game, but it was also branded as a new IP. While the company also issued a statement saying it wasn't ruling out returning to the Life is Strange world, it was focusing on exciting new projects for the near term. One of those new projects ended up being Tell Me Why. That really showed that Don't Nod was serious about trying something else, but that game also showed it could pull it off. The title didn't get the same kind of critical acclaim that Life is Strange earned, but it really showed off Don't Nod's chops. Life is Strange True Colors will be available September 10th for PC, PS4, PS5, Stadia, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X, and Xbox Series S. Are you finally getting tired of some of Jackbox Party Pack 7's games? No? Yeah, me neither. But just in case you were, the next chapter of the party packing is on the way, as Jackbox Party Pack 8 has been announced for this fall. There's absolutely no indication of what kind of games are going to be rolling out with this pack, but there has been a large amount of turtles shown in all of the teaser materials and imagery, so there might be a game in this pack about turtles. Resident Evil RE Verse, the standalone multiplayer mode that pits the series' classic characters against each other in competitive matches, will get an open beta next month. The title was probably the strangest and most surprising announcement from the January Resident Evil Showcase and soon players will get to try it for themselves and see what it's made of. The open beta begins April 7th at 11am PDT and concludes April 10 at 10.59pm PDT. It will be available on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC via Steam. The first gameplay trailer for Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 shows how players will solve mysteries both with their brains and fists. Sherlock Holmes is one of literature's most notable characters, with adaptions on television and film. There are many Sherlock Holmes video games as well, but many are smaller scale projects. Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 from Frogwares hoped to change that. The action-adventure game presents the world's greatest detective in an exciting new way. Now, interested gamers can see for themselves as Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1's first gameplay trailer has been released. Much like the modern Sherlock Holmes movie starring Robert Downey Jr. and Jude Law, action plays a major role in Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. Third-person combat in Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 involves observing enemy vulnerabilities and making the most of each environment. Holmes will make the most of his fists, assorted tools, and even weapons including a pistol. But Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 isn't purely an action game, as Holmes is a detective after all. Players will have to execute investigations, gather clues, don disguises, interview witnesses, and piece together cases bit by bit. One interesting aspect of Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 is that the game will allow the player's choices to influence the development of Holmes as a character. The Chapter 1 part of the title is partly due to this being a story about a very young Holmes. Prior to his greatest achievements, the way the players uncover the truth could lead to certain lasting harms, including to Holmes himself. Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 releases in 2021 on PC. Amazon has announced the opening of a new game studio in Montreal, Canada. The move comes after the company's new CEO recently reaffirmed its commitment to game development. The new studio will be focused on AAA game development and joins Amazon's existing studios in Seattle, San Diego, and Orange County. According to Amazon's press release, the Montreal studio is actively hiring and is held by veteran designers who once formed the core of the development team for Rainbow Six Siege. Amazon states that the Montreal team's first project will be a new online multiplayer title. Steam drops a major update to Remote Play Together, allowing users to play local multiplayer games with those who don't have accounts. A major barrier for multiplayer indie games over the past decade has been the addition of online lobbies or matchmaking. It's a challenging amount of work for any indie team especially when poor online multiplayer implementation can damage the quality of an otherwise great local multiplayer game's reputation. That's why Steam's Remote Play Together feature, which implements an 
online way to play local multiplayer games is so exciting, and why Steam's latest update has made it even better. It's weird to consider it a limitation, but up until now, Steam has had a big one for its remote play together feature. The limitation is that Steam users could only invite other Steam users to play with them. That may seem like an obvious and sensible limitation, it's how it works for other online multiplayer games after all. As such, Steam users can now invite anyone to play local call games with them even if they don't have a Steam account. And that pretty much wraps up all the gaming news that I could find for this week. This has been Doco Bell from OTG Gaming News, signing out. To cheer up!